Hi, everyone. It's great to be on stage at AWE. Um, great event today. So let's jump into the Jarvis era. Um, the only thing I need is my content. Why? Because what you will see in a couple of seconds, if you've if you already prepared, is, ah, here we go, is the first Precy AR presentation today. So um, let me start with a question, you guys. Who knows what Jarvis is? Oh, 10 people, 20, okay. Who knows what the Iron Man movie is? More, good, that's a good start. Let's take it from here. Um, I wanna show you a little bit on that trip to the Jarvis era, uh, why it is very interesting for AR and MR and VR to uh, bring the content we have and in information and knowledge into our surroundings and what we can do with that and where we are on that journey. So, great. So, and the world we live in is completely 3D, right? I mean, the chair you're sitting on is 3D. You can touch it, that's a real chair. So everything you have in your environment is 3D. But the way we work, and interact is still like what you see here on the screen. It's paper-based manuals, it's little screens, and things like that. So why do we have everything we work and we learn with in 2D when we live in a 3D world? Um, and augmented and mixed and virtual reality is a big opportunity for us to change that and to merge our world somehow and to bring the information exactly to the point where we need it, but also what we need. So that's the difference, what we can do with those technologies. And I will explain you what I mean with that on our trip to the Chavez era in a second. So I call the point where we are the search engine era. What do you do today when you search for an information? Let me say you wanna know something about our Earth. You go on Google, you go on Wikipedia, you type in Earth, and you get a text, you can read that, and if you see it like that, you can have an image and you can watch that, um, and that's it. It's again 2D, right? I mean, I'm thankful for Jimmy Wales for Wikipedia because I don't know how I should answer all the questions of my six-year-old son, uh, so that's a great tool, but it's 2D. I can't really interact with it. And on the other side, what we see is that the computer is disappearing. Um, we had desktop PCs a couple of years ago, then we had notebooks, now we have mobiles, and even that is not enough. We go to Alexa, we go to Google Home, and things like that. So if you don't have a computer anymore, for what do we need to have a desk? Maybe the world is our desk. And this is the way how I want to have Wikipedia and all the other tools and my information I want to do it as I did it here with my colleague Harry. I was walking around that earth, interacting with it, and looking for it. That's a completely different way. I can do that with a lot of people around the world, and that's another experience and just see it. So bring me Wikipedia in that way. That would be awesome. Um, what do we have to do for that? We have to merge the worlds. That means we have to bring the real environment and a digital content, a digital environment together to do those two things. Um, and I wanna show you in a, in a little video clip uh, how the next generation is already doing that and, and thinking about that. You will see in the video clip a six-year-old kid with a HoloLens um, playing around with a toy dog. Have a look on it, and later on I will explain you what he's doing. Good, Nico, what must do? Ei, mit dem Hund, den du in der Brille siehst? Ja. Gefangen! Wer hat ihn gefangen, den Ball? Der Hund. Der Hund hier? Ja. Okay, den siehst du nur, nur du, ne? Oh! Die, die beiden spielen miteinander? Wow! So, I call him the Mixed Reality Turtle. 
This is my son, he's six years old, and he doesn't, by the way, he doesn't complain that the Microsoft toilet is too bulky and too heavy. He's running around with it. So what he did is he has a toy dog, right? And with a HoloLens, he placed a virtual dog in the living room. And I didn't tell him to do that. I just came to the living room and asked him what he's doing there. For the German speakers, they understood what was on the, in the clip. And he was playing with a balloon, with a toy dog, with a real toy dog, and the virtual dog, and was throwing the balloon uh, uh, to the virtual dog. So I didn't tell him to merge the words. He just did it. And that's the way how the next generations will do that, and also on the other side, what they expect how to learn and how to work in the future. Um, coming to learn and education, then I have a quote for you, which is from Peter Thiel, the uh, co-founder of PayPal, and he said, education is an overpriced luxury. What he meant with it is that it can't be anymore that there are people who don't have access to specific university, universities or education, um, that you need to have that everywhere and not limited. It's the same way as when you think about it, when Google puts all the balloons into the sky to give everyone access to internet. So with AR and mixed and VR, we can give everyone maybe access to education without any limits, and it's not luxury anymore. Coming to the work area, uh, we just discussed about uh, backstage. How do you work today? You have to fix something. I always struggle when I do things like I have to connect cables or I have to use a router or something like that. I never know where I have to put the cables. So what do you have to do? You have to, to use a paper-based manual or you have to find it. Find it, that's the problem, right? So what you see here are some numbers from reports like McKinsey and others, and they say that um, 1.5 hours per day, nine hours per week, you're only searching and gathering information. You're not doing the job, you're only searching for the information. Nine hours per week. Imagine what you could do with those nine hours. A lot of more interesting things than searching for information. And what I just explained, the way we do it today, is we have one of those uh, paper things and we read that and we have to find the information and that's kind of annoying. Uh, I want to see then uh, below is exactly what I mean with the Chavez era. You have all the information you need surrounding you in a contextual way. You don't need to actively search for it like in this search engine area where we are now. It is there and it knows when it has to be there. So. I'm sorry for the interruptions. Sometimes it does not work. Igor, can you give me the next? Thanks. Uh, so th on the way to the Chavez era, there are three things. It's about the enablers, it's about acceptance, and it's about convergence. And I just chose three different things for the enablers. We could talk hours about different companies who bring up something like Facebook, Oculus, uh, Magic Leap, and many others. I just uh, chose three to show that. The first one, Apple. You know that Apple announced ARCade and many other things, and I want to show you a, a little clip which uh, was filmed um, in an Apple store, and that was one of the first concepts where they showed how to bring information into the real environment uh, that you have location-based content. And you might ask, okay, but wait, uh, we have seen something like that years ago when Mateo built those browsers, or Wikidude is also doing that. Yes, but now what changes it's a company like Apple integrating that into their iOS. And if you have a look on iOS 11 and you go into the Maps application, you already see the first part of it. When you go and do a flyover, for example, to New York, you see content popping up. Um, the next one, which is a key element to map the, um, the environment, is the Google uh, Visual Positioning Service, uh, which maps your environment and guides you to an indoor location. And once we have that for an outdoor location, it will be completely different to place the information in our environment because the camera in our smartphone or in our glasses then in a couple of years will know where we are and can navigate us through. And the next one, I'll tell you before, because it has sound, is an example from the guys from Meta. Um, and it shows how the, the CEO and founder, Maron Gribbets, um, was writing emails uh, 
with his Meta headset instead of using the desktop. So this is what I said at the beginning. We don't want to have the 2D screens anymore. Bring that in our 3D environment. And he was doing that in the first workaround. Um, meanwhile, they have many, many, many other videos, but I like that what he shared on Twitter. Hey Twitter, I promised you last week I would show you how I write emails through the Meta2 headset, and that's exactly what we're gonna do, uh, giving you a glimpse into my daily life of productivity and creativity in the headset. So first I'm gonna flip the camera. I'm gonna stick it inside the field of view of the glasses, so you can see it's very, very readable. Uh, great tracking. I am coming into this beautiful brain by Professor Adam Ghazali's lab, UCSF single line, single pixel lines, that's real DTI and MRI data. And here's my uh, ginormous monitors that, that I have here attached to the real world. Um, so let's write a quick email. I built a little uh, external monitor rig for you guys. So Mirror showed how to have all the work in mind and, and, and 3D, which is something completely different. You have everything around you and you can configure it. Uh, this is what I said. You don't need your desk anymore. Um, after we talked about enablers, we talked quickly about the acceptance because that's for me one of the most important things. You can have the best technology, you can have the best hardware. If you don't have acceptance for that technology, for AR and VR, it's not gonna be successful. People, and there's a we, we have to accept it, we have to use it. Uh, and there are three things. It's about fashion, it's about the form factor, is what we talk for. Uh, it has to fit, it's not too heavy, not too bulky, otherwise you would not run around with devices like what we have today outside in the streets. Um, it's about functionality, it has to be useful, it has to be meaningful. And you have to, it, it has to be in a way that you can use it daily for your daily life. Otherwise, it's not ready for what we want to have. And the most important part is for me, um, and this is also the specific thing of the Charvis, it's about the interfaces. We have technology and we have the human. So please don't forget the human. This is the most important factor here. So we have to connect the both of them with interfaces. This is what we see today already. If you don't have the right interfaces, it's hard to use all that stuff and all that hardware. And we connect to the humans to machine, and the next day we will connect it to our brain. The MIT is already working on that, uh, where they have an implant um, in, in the brain, and you can control a simple keyboard. Um, Facebook, with their um, research department, Building Aid is already working on brain. Um, computer interfaces. And then we come to the holographic uh, interfaces. Holographic interfaces which give you the possibility to act in a natural way with your environment, with AR and mix, and with virtual reality. And now, I can show you what is Charvis. And probably you have seen that before. Charvis is the supercomputer in the Iron Man movie. And what you see here is one of those holographic interfaces where you can naturally interact with, without any other devices, without any other things, you're just there, and the content and the device and the interface is surrounding you, seamlessly integrated. So that's the way where we want to go to on our vision. Oculus, um, during the OC, OC4, showed something like that in a virtual way, which is not the Charvis yet, but it shows more or less um, how that is when you have everything in your 3D environment. Okay, so many things you have seen are also possible today. We can put content into the real environment. We can do that with AR and with mixed and virtual reality. But the inter interesting part can stand when we have the third point, we have the convergence. If you think back about mobile and internet, 
that get successful when they converge with each other. And it's the same with AR and with mixed and virtual reality. When you see the things here on the table, Internet of Things, machine learning, artificial intelligence, social interaction, those are the things we need to place the content in a seamless way and in a smart and an intelligent way. Otherwise, we have the same as what we have today. It just pops up, but it does not know when it has had to do that. And talking about the timeline, because that might be one of the questions, this is just a prediction. I didn't talk to Ray Kurzweil about that, um, but when you see what's going on right now with different devices, you can see uh, where we go to. So today is what you see. Um, we have 2D screens, we have the printed manuals, everything I explained. Five years we can think about that we have the first smart glasses we really use daily. 2020 it will start that we have the, the first good ones. Uh, in 15 years we might be able to have glasses for daily life to really connect the human to those digital technologies, uh, to have the first brain computer interfaces and as I said, maybe also contact lenses or any other kind of device we, we even don't know yet. And in 20 years, I hope that our vision becomes reality and we will have something like the Chavez era where you have everything surrounding you. You have holographic displays and interfaces and you don't need to read any kind of paper-based manual and anything anymore. So I hope we will have it. I then we will share it with you. And if everything works, see you in the Chavez era. Thank you very much.